you can tell the months they were grafting and putting them bits in the mouth and having them in the mouth for the majority of the day where they're grafting in case police come so they can swallow them. The way they move and they drink and all of this, you can tell that the leakage on the wrappings and the residue on the wrappings of them going into the system with the saliva on a daily basis, round and round, round the clock as the cell as the grafting bits, bits in the mouth. The residue of the bits leaking down into saliva, continuous for a couple of months because they're doing it daily. Eventually they end up looking rough as shite and that some of them end up smoking the shite. Some of them end up smoking because they rattle of it because they're continuously ba 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 bam. So years and years and years ago, going off track a bit, but years and years and years ago, when the grafters in Anfield was giving their bits to the kids to sell, they'd single wrap them. And what you'd had, you'd had the likes of, um, let's say Campbell, Paul Campbell, decent kid, grafter all his life, selling bits, bits in his mouth, ended up on the tackle. He ended up selling for other people because it just destroyed him and his graft. He ended up selling for other people. He's had about 26 bits in his mouth of heroin in single wraps. He's been pulled, he swallowed them, whilst they were in the stomach, he's OD'd on them. He died whilst in police custody. Oh no, he nearly died whilst in police custody. But there's been others that's died whilst in police custody. Swallowing heroin, single wrapped, while they're being jumped on while selling drugs. This little conspiracy here, Ashcroft, Pes Ashcroft, Prescott and Rutter were all arrested and found to be in possession of Class A drugs, which caused fractions within the gang as drug debts were beginning to mount. This was particularly the case from Prescott, who had twice been stopped by police in a stolen vehicle on the first occasion he made off, reaching speeds of 80 miles per hour in a 30 zone and rammed a police car. After his arrest on another occasion, he made threats to chop up two police officers arresting him with two large machetes that were in the vehicle at the time of his arrest. Violent kid, this one, isn't he? He must have been smoking crack to be able like that. He must have been consuming some sort of Class A drug to be acting like that. Do you understand what I mean? Prescott was later stabbed repeatedly in the head by Muldoon. So you've got two friends. He started arguing because graphs were getting messed up, drugs were getting took by police and money was going missing. They started arguing. Prescott, who was threatening the coppers with two machetes living by the knife, has now been wounded by the knife by someone he once called a friend. But as I keep on telling you, in the drug game, your brother from a mother, another mother will stab you in the back instantly if he thinks he's being ripped off by you. No ifs or buts. Rutter was also arrested following a police pursuit and was found to have a machete, a taser, a knife and CS spray. While Ashcroft's arrest during a warrant in January 2020 uncovered information that he was paying his mother, Marie Ledworth, 39, £50 a day to store drugs at her address on behalf of Muldoon. So Muldoon's got one of the other kids paying his mum to store drugs in his house. The mum knew this was happening, and that's probably the one female out of the six that got jailed. Let's see. Despite being remanded in custody, Muldoon continued to run the business from a mobile phone he had within his prison cell, directing Ashcroft in the supply and distribution of drugs. The, groups were, the group were ultimately dismantled during the course of the challenging investigation, and all seven of the group were charged with various drug, drugs, driving and violent offences. The men aged between 21 and 24 were jailed on Monday, December the 20th, after a two-day hearing held at Bolton Crown Court, after all previously pleading guilty, with a six-man to be sentenced in February. Muldoon of Norris Green, Liverpool, has been sentenced to six and a half years after admitting offences of conspiracy to supply Class A drugs. He will serve this sentence in addition to the nine years for which he is currently serving for stabbing 
for the stabbing of Declan Prescott, taking the sentence to 15 and a half years in total. So Muldoon, the main man out of the bunch, so so, the one who stabbed Prescott in the head with a knife, who was already serving nine years, has now gone and went and, went and got six and a half years added to his nine years, which means once he's finished his nine year sentence, his six year sentence will carry on. So basically he had nine years, he had the possibility of getting out around five and a half. Now he's got 15 years, he's got the possibility of getting out around nine. Big difference for what? For what? Look at the years he's missing. He's 23 now, he's got about eight, nine years to do. He's getting out when he's 33. Is it worth it? You know, you thought you were Bicklitz on the wing, you thought you were the man, you had the phone, you had the graft outside, you were getting parcels in to keep everyone sweet. Everyone was on your balls, licking your balls. Now you've just got 60, six and a half years. For grafting in the prison you were grafting in, you've probably been recategorised. You're probably from progressing through the prison system. you just made your bad situation into an even more severely bad situation. And this is what Choose a Life, Not a Knife is all about. Keeping you away from that system in the first place. This kid's 23. He's selling drugs from a cell in prison thinking he's Pablo Arthur He's just got an extra six and a half years. Do you understand where I'm going with this, people? Prescott from Adderton has been sentenced to two years and nine months after admitting offences of conspiracy to class, class A drugs, control drugs and dangerous driving. He done well. He done very, very well. It might be down to the fact that he got stabbed in the head and there might be an element of victimisation and bullying or whatever you may suggest that's why the judges took it lenient on him he was also sentenced to a further four oh I should have read <laughs> I should have carried on he was also sentenced to a further four years for two unrelated offences of robbery taking a sentence to six years and nine months Ashcroft of Kevin Grove Lee has been sentenced to six years after being found guilty of offences of conspiracy to apply class A controlled drugs Rutter of Wigan blah 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 Jarrah of Kingland Crescent, Liverpool, is due to be sentenced on Wednesday, February the night after him admitting. So he must be caught up in another trial so he can't be sentenced, or he must have other offences that need to be dealt with before he gets sentenced so they can align them all with the result of that trial or whatever. But there's three stories, people. You know, we never touched on the nonce one. We've got other stories to look at here. Got other stories to... Have a little look at it. I'll go into one more. See if there's any more crime out there. Team boy threatened with machete over £150 coat. I'll just touch on that. What is a team boy doing with a £150 jacket on his back anyway? How materialistic are your parents to be getting you a jacket worth a car? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's mad, isn't it, lad? Don't put yourself at risk. You know, if you're going to get a nice jacket, go and get a nice £200 jacket. You don't need an £800 jacket. And don't start launching your shit in your mind because you can't afford it. It's just all that material. You might look good, but you look good to other people. You look good to other people that can't afford that. You look good to other people that will just take it off you. You know, there's a time and a place. And as I keep on saying, there's an age. You know, stick with it. But you're going to wear all the fucking young and then get old when you're older. You're going to pay for yourself when you get older. Dad sold £1 million of drugs to pay off brother's gangland debts. Let's read this one, eh? I'm doing a live every night. And I hope something goes on. I hope someone makes a move whilst I'm on live. So this is the next story. 
Dad sold one million pound of drugs to pay off brother's gangland debts. He traded heroin for a mystery kingpin who used Liverpool FC nickname on Encro Chat. He traded heroin for a mystery kingpin. Stop talking complete. Sh I don't know how the courts be believed him. So we've got Ryan Doolan traded in huge amounts of heroin, cocaine and cannabis. He's got a jaw like every steroid abusing growth injecting individual has. An electrician by trade sold more than £1 million of heroin, cocaine and cannabis as he tried to pay off his brother's gangland debts. Ryan Doolan traded in some 200 kilos of drugs and handled around 1 million of dirty cash under the Encro Chat handle name Wind Soup. He looks like that keeper lad, yeah? Ring it off him actually, now you just said that. Secret messages showed the Gattaca dad was under the command of Mr. Be Drug King Ben Alison Becker. An, unident an unidentified cook who used the name of Liverpool goalkeeper on the encrypted phone network, Juji. But the text also revealed he was working off a debt owed by his brother Sean Doolan, who was jailed for 14 years for a huge heroin plot in October 2019. Oh, yeah, 2019. Sean Doolan, now 35, was the head of a Liverpool-based gang that flooded cities across England and Wales with more than £16 million of Class A drugs. He was caught when trying to board a one-way flight to Cyprus with his wife and four children at John Lennon Airport in November 2018. Liverpool Crown Court aide Sean Doolan owned underworld figures hundreds of thousands of pounds due to the drugs seized when his network collapsed. Prosecutors accept Ryan Doolan 32 took on no debts. Charles prosecuting said, it is accepted that certain messages demonstrate that the defendant is working off a debt to Alison Becker. That had been accrued by the defendant's brother, Sean Doolan. Sean Doolan was said to be the leader of a Merseyside operation in which there had been a number of drug sieges as part of the investigation. The court heard that as, that as of March 28, 2020, it appeared the debt was in the region of £225,000. Mr Landers said messages sent that day suggested Ryan Doolan had reduced his brother's debt by £45,000, which was 20% off the bill. Detectives were able to link the electrician to the wind sweep profile after other Encro chat users referred to him as the Spark and Spachatuza. <laughs> He also made a series of blunders as he mentioned his girlfriend being a nurse, her brother being a, in prison, talked about his children. He stood. So anyway, prosecutors said he had 48 contacts stored in his Encro chat device. He was involved in the supply of minimum of 123 kilograms of, 123 kilograms of heroin, 25 kilograms of cocaine and 59 kilograms of cannabis. Police recovered his messages from March the 26th to May the 30th, 2020, but also a note created on his phone on January the 7th, which show he had been involved in lucrative conspiracies since at least the start of that year. Woo! Well, there you go, people. It's all about this... Alison Becker, isn't it? How many stories have you heard about this Encro chat about Liverpool men being caught grafting off the Encro chat and Alison Becker's name coming up in it? Now, let's not forget how far back this stuff goes. You know, these Encro chats were getting used for years and years. Although the, although the authorities only, only get to go back so many years with the devices, they can trace the messages back if they've been ongoing for so many years. And what the authorities will be doing now is, they'll already know who Alison Becker is. Why? Because they've got the phones, they're able to pinpoint some of them by the way of 
what cars are in the photos, what luxuries, what names are mentioned. And what they've got, they'll have a little network, the police will, that'll be able to cycle through all this and link that to this, this to that, this to that. And that's how they're identifying the majority of these kids. Alison Becker, who fled to Dubai in 2019 with him, his girlfriend, someone else's child and his child, he looks like him. It's the ringer of him. But he's only about five foot four. You've heard me mention his name. I'm convinced it's him. There's only one kid in the city of Liverpool who has had that power. There's only one Scouse kid in the city of Liverpool who has had that power since the demise of Curtis Warren. Simple as that. The man that raised and praised Curtis Warren, raised and praised this kid I'm referring to as Alison Becker. So you who read crime novels and crime true stories may have heard of the banker. The banker is Philly Glennon. The Glennons. It was the Glennons that sent Curtis Warren on his path to notoriety. Glennon, the daughter, was Warren's missus for a long, long, long time. Eventually it broke up because of the, the amount of time within prison that Warren was spending. But people felt the gap. And it was him that felt the gap. You've heard me speak about him in the past. You've heard me mention him a long time. How did I first come into contact with this individual? You know I used to be around the kids off Scotty Road. You know I used to frequent Kirkdale. And I used to have it with a lot of boys. Nice one for that watch out TikTok. I used to mix with Pancake Taylor, James Richardson, Lee Glover, Duncan Miller, Jay Murphy, Wacky, Mikey Wright, Gibbo. All of them I used to mix with all of them. Doesn't matter how deep, doesn't matter if it was on the fringes. I mixed with all of them at one point in my life. So, when I was mixing with them, I had a few individuals working with me, the likes of Dave Whelan, who all use in Scotland will know as Meat and Mosset. I had individuals like them round me whilst I was along Scotty. And Pancake Taylor, Spiff, and people like that, used to work for this kid, who I'm speaking about now, the one that fled to Dubai in 2019. How I met this kid that fled to Dubai in 2019, Pancake Taylor and others, used to have this group that used to travel to Aberdeen, they used to travel to Aberdeen with a lot of drugs. Then drugs would go into a caravan. They'd be, stuck, they'd be stored in that caravan until the whole consignment was sold and then the money would be taken back across the border into Liverpool. On one occasion, some of them drugs have gone missing. The way criminals in England confirm whether a parcel has gone down in Scotland, truthfully, pushing the, the word of the person aside, they go to the local papers. They look in the local papers to see what drugs was recovered. You know, if there was 30, kilogram, if there was 30 kilos of, of cannabis and 10 kilos of heroin, and in the paper it's saying five kilos of heroin was recovered and so many kilos of... Some's gone missing. And the blame falls back on the individual that was sitting in the storage the caravan. On this one occasion, fingers. I forgot it. Lynch. Lynch. Was it Lynch? Anyway, fingers. This kid used to travel up and down the road for years with grapey. People like this for years. Up and down the road, Scotland. So 
Fingers has gone up the road. He's been doing it for months. There's been no hiccups. Everything's been going fine. He was mixing with this kid called John Ormy. Not the older one, the younger one. So they go up there, they take the parcel up there, they do what they've got to do, they get the dough in, they come back down. They're all living nice, they're all making a lot of money. Why? Because they're turning one key into three and sending it up the road. What does that mean? One kilo of heroin in Liverpool that you'd sell on the streets in Liverpool was getting chopped into three kilos and getting sent up the road. So when they're paying 21 bags for a key of heroin, they're sending it up the road for 30 bags, but it's being chopped into three, so they're getting 90 bags. So they're receiving 70 bags profit on the 21 they've invested on the first kilogram. That's the way it used to be in the 2000s, early 2000s. Don't know what it's like now. But anyway, fingers, homie, used to go up there with this parcel, store it in the caravan, do what they're doing, da -da 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 -da. all of a sudden one's gone down. Okay, one's gone down, we'll take your word for it. Da -da 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 -da. Fill the gap, get back up there, but the customers still need feeding. Dish, dish, dish. New parcels gone up. Everything's okay, everything's okay. Ba -ba -ba -bam. Few trips. <laughs> Bang, another one's gone. But only this time the newspapers are contradicting fingers. So I'm around this bunch now, and I'm speaking to this bunch. And I'm just observing this bunch. And I'm saying to this bunch, are you seriously going to take this off this kid? He bumped his last time, you give him a walk over because he can justify it. This time there's no justification. You've got the local paper contradicting him. And when you're asking him what's going on, he's not giving you a true account. You just need to deal with it. Don't forget, this is how I first met Alison Becker. Yeah? So, who I think is Alison Becker, all right? So, as this is going on, I'm saying to these, you need to be dealing with this, ba 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 bam They say to me, how can we deal with this? I said, simple, call him down. As he's going up the stairs, I'll chicken him. If you don't know what a chicken is, it's coming behind someone, putting him in a guillotine and putting him asleep, yeah? So the plan was set. In this block of flats, it was all ours. It was the boys off Scotty Road, and it was all ours. You had Jay Mavy in the top one. You had some other kids, some some other Jay in the bottom one, and the two, the middle floor was empty, other than a girl that knew Jay upstairs, which was sweet. Yes, X two three. Thanks for this. So in that centre flat, a few things used to get stored there, but it was empty. It was just an empty flat. So. The mindset was, as he comes in the building, we need to speak about what's going on, blah, 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 get the dough off him, da, 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 da. He comes in, he goes up the first flight of stairs. As he's halfway up them flight of stairs, I slip in behind him, guillotine, bang, put him a kip, drag him along the landing, drag him into the empty flat, put him into the bedroom, shut the door. He's asleep now with two individuals in the room with him. I've left the room. Certain other individuals have left the room. Now, this fingers is responsible for taking Alison Beckham's 90 or something like that. There was something like five kilos of heroin gone. Someone had to pay for it. Pancake, Glover and Cole had to prove to the main man himself that was getting done on the ground about this parcel that's gone down. He wanted paying. These couldn't pay him. So they had to show him who was to blame, and that was Fingers. So now what you've got is Fingers in this room, and you've got this individual in this room with Fingers. Now this individual gets Fingers, believe it or not, he's put a curtain over the, he's put a curtain over the thing. He's got the kids outside to get the music on in the block of flats. So the, the block of flats is pumping now. Boom, 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 like a party's going on. You've got this one man with two bats. This is no book. People can confirm this for you. You've got one man with two bats. Aluminium baseball bat and a wooden baseball bat. You've got fingers, the victim, in the corner, tied up in a German torture stance. 
If you don't know what a German torture stance, it's your hands behind your back tied, and then your then your feet are tied, then your hands are tied to your feet from behind. That is a German torture stance. The room's dark, there's just a little bit of light coming in from the hall, there's music going on, and you can hear the obvious people outside waiting to see what's going on with this kid, whether the parcel's going to return or whether the money's going to return. Wanting the truth, yeah? You've got this kid, his mate, John Ormby, sat outside the flat thinking he's not coming in, but let's see what happens, yeah? So you've got this man with two baseball bats and you've got fingers in the German torture stance. The man goes to work on fingers with the wooden baseball bat and he's going to town. Fingers is in the corner. You've got a square room, he's in the corner. So it's only his right side showing at the moment. He's on his knees with his hands strapped to his ankles behind. He's getting belted continuously till the bat snaps. The wooden baseball bat snaps. The man with the wooden baseball bat is sweating from head to toe. The man strips off everything except for his boxes and his trainers. At that point, the door opens. In pops Glover, in pops Pancake and in pops Alison Becker. Alison Becker's ass falls out of him. <laughs> Why the views brought me here? Why the views brought me here? That's what's coming out of his mouth. He's fuming. He's bailing. But before he bails, he looks at the man who's standing there in his trainees, now with the aluminium baseball bat, now with fingers in the other corner, targeting the other side of his body. Alison Beck is looking at this man, thinking, what the f*** is going on there? He bails. These still need the dough. So these are instructing the man in the shorts, sweating his back off, to carry on getting the dough. Fingers, he's been unconscious twice. He's been woke up twice. He's been belted for three and a half hours. He's already had a wooden bat snapped on him. It comes to the point now where the ties have got to come off. Why? Because all his limbs have swelled beyond the point of bursting. So to, to alleviate that, the ties have come off. He still could not move. This is a true account of a situation that went on with someone that I never witnessed but was told everything about. True account. He was then stuck in the German torture position, but without the ties. He was not tied into this position. His bones has suffered some sort of cramp and his muscles and all his, and all his tissue had swelled beyond recognition. He was black and blue from neck to feet. His cheekbones were gone, his nose was gone and his jaw was gone. He was in and out of consciousness quite a few times. He was then kicked round the room for another few hours to the point where he just weren't admitting nothing. Nothing was recovered, nothing regained. He was placed into a car. He was drove along County Road naked. He had the curtain out the room wrapped around his neck. He was placed into the boot of an estate vehicle and he was drove along County Road and he was kicked out the boot and he looked like that man. That's what the kids said. He lied on the road outside the McDonald's on County Road for at least 10 minutes before it was a scene of crime. He was rushed to hospital and whatever happened there. I was in custody five, six years later. I land on the landing. Someone's refusing to come out of the cell. Someone's on the prison yard. I end up on the prison yard. Someone sprints off the prison yard then refuse to come out of the cell. It was fingers. I believe he still pisses the bed through that traumatic experience. I believe he has nightmares. I believe he on Wonder Patrol consistently because he's still abusing cocaine. Unfortunately, no one was arrested for that crime. The people that were responsible for it, the main, the main participants, He's now dead. 
But that's true crime for you right there, people. That's true crime for you. And it all stemmed back on how I first come into contact with Alison Becker. That was the occasion I first came into contact with Alison Becker. Well, anyway, as we move on, people, the Real Crime, Real Time podcast will start focusing as we go into the year 2022 on the real topics of communities, raising awareness, doing what I can as a one-man band. I've now been supported for a third of the year and my life's been better for it. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank every one of you members and any one of you that's donated any sort of money, it doesn't matter, it's all counting, you can see it, you can see the stage getting better, you can see the ton content becoming better, and you can see me eating, sleeping, and dressing myself, feeling myself, getting that pride back, feeling motivated for next year. It doesn't matter what tidal way it comes at me now, it doesn't matter what angle they come from, none can penetrate this mind any longer, just me and my thoughts, and they're all positive. And I'm here, as always, to spin this message. Spin it as far and wide as I can. It doesn't matter if it's chaotic. It doesn't matter if it's not uniform. If it's not the usual way of doing things. It's my way of doing things, and I feel my way of doing things is penetrating the minds of the right people that need to be penetrated. And that's the youth who are at risk of joining gangs who are at risk of getting stabbed, shot or lifed off in prison. It doesn't matter what avenue you take as long as you take a good life and stay away from the knife life and the umbrella that comes with it. All the pitfalls of that shite that's under the umbrella of choose a life not a knife, there's loads of them but you can get away from them and you can prevent yourself ending up in them. You can stop yourself ending up under that umbrella of complete poison and snakes. You get people criticising this message on a continuous basis. Yeah, he's just repeating himself. Yeah, he's doing nothing. There's no action. There's no action. I can't do action when I've got all them trying to stop me from taking action. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm still moving forward. Next year, I'm going to go all out right up until the summer to do what I can for this message. It is what it is, summer 2022. I've told you a week ago, yous are coming raving with me. I need a break from this terrifying life. I'm attacking all them decent raves and you're coming with me. That's where we're going, year 2022. The message, me to you. So anyway, we've got 550 people in watching. That's great. I've had a nice few donations tonight. That's fantastic. It's now coming up to nearly quarter past ten. I must have been on for what? How long have I been on for, people? Do you know? Seventy-one minutes. So I've just gone over the hour. That's the first episode for tonight. What I want to do. I don't want to jeopardise this with copyright lyrics and copyright music. I want to try and get me full funding for it. So I'm going to lock off this and then I'm going to come back on. And what day is it? Tuesday? Four days till Christmas. Most people have got the last day of work very soon. Most people never even had work. Some years can stay up late. Some years can relate. Some years can't. I'm not really asked. If you want to have a little scream, if you want to have a little something different on your life here tonight than what you're used to, Lock in, it can shift, it can shift patterns left, right and centre all night. You don't know what mindset I'm going to go into. It all depends on the comments. That's why I keep on reiterating to me members out there, me members that can see me getting provoked, me members that can see me latching onto the negative comments and starting to get, you know, antagonised by them. The first people I look at are the people that make donations, like, like, 
B Cars Live and the members, I look at them comments before the rest. So if you see these little horrible trolls kicking back in, like they're going to, they're always going to on a feed like this. So when they're kicking in, I expect a little bit of solidarity from the members and, and the, the donators to just say, whoa, ignore him, block him, you know, like that, and I'll deal with it. And then eventually we can have a nice chilled out evening with all the right people on board, with all the right people that want to hear, want to spend some time with me in their room. That's where I want to be at. I can't be asked continuously talking about individuals that mean nothing to me. I don't love them. They've got no energy of mine. They're not going to hurt me in any way. It is what it is. I can't keep on wasting the valuable time I have got on them. Are you with me? I can only call them out so many times. I can only tell people where my address is so many times. Anyone can come and get me. Anyone can turn up to my door. I'm not interested. I've never run. I've always took decisions to get myself safe and away from prison. And that's all you see me while I left Liverpool. They weren't trying to have it with me. They were trying to kill me with rats or get me put in prison. I survived the rats. They were going all out with the prison. You know, we had the likes of Daniel Lowe snitching on me, going straight to police stations, telling complete lies. Lucky I taped it. Lucky I'm a YouTube blogger, otherwise I would have got JLN and my licence. But thankfully, because it was on my YouTube and my Choose a Life, Not a Knife, I had my camera at the ready. And it proved she was just lying through her teeth. But anyway, that's all news. I've moved forward. I hope you have. I'm still going forward. I hope you're all going to come with me. I'll be back on at what? Half ten. I need a drink of that water and I need to chill out for a little bit. All right? Half ten season a bit. I know there's 534 watching. And people out there that clickbait and people out there that love this and get egos off this and, and thrive off the comments that build them up and drop them down and so on and so forth. I'm not really into that. I'm here to entertain sometimes, but I'm also here to share wisdom and inspire the youth to try and create change within themselves and others. That's the priority. Tonight, what are we going to have? you just had true crime, basically, haven't you? You've had one of my stories, which is a true account, can be backed up by various individuals. And then you've had some of the daily newspaper from the city of Liverpool. As you can tell, the crimes are dirty, the crimes are nasty. It's continuous uploads, continuous front pages of gang attack, gang violence, rapes. It's not good in the communities. It's not good in our city and it's deteriorating. You've got men like Tom Coxton going into town, enjoying his night out and coming away with a hundred stitcher wound down the side of his face. You've got young girls getting stabbed to death. You've got men getting stabbed to death continuously within the city now. What do we do? Sit back and hope that the police are the only ones that can address this. Hope that No More Knives are the only organisation out there that can tap at this. There's loads of organisations out there that all need to come to the table and all need to focus on the youth. On the youth. Money should be no object. Like it's no object for other situations in the world. Especially war. There should be no object for money when it's coming to getting the youth and sorting their future out with a safe environment. First and foremost. Without a safe environment... We've got nothing. L5 Alive, choose a life, not a night, Darren G. In the glorious city of Birmingham, from the beautiful city of Liverpool. Peace out, L5, shout. As you can see on the banner above my head, you might be able to see it because it's dark, but let me read it out for you. The city of Liverpool united in the fight against violent crime. Protect our children, protect our future. Choose a life, not a night, UK. It's as simple as that, people. Protect our children, protect our future. Peace out. L5 shout. See you in a minute.